Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Have you ever heard that biotin is really excellent for your hair, skin, and nails? Well, that is because it is. But I want to talk in significantly more important details about biotin today talking about how biotin deficiencies or insufficiencies, getting inadequate amounts of biotin from dietary intake, the real true negative impact this can have on your health. So I am Amanda Williams, MD, MPH. And when we think about biotin, this is in its own right, it's like a, its own little unique B complex. So it's one of our water-soluble B vitamins, but it plays a really integral role in so many different functions in the body. And I'm going to get into how important these are because many times we don't recognize biotin for its true abilities. We look at it for hair, skin, and nails, which of course, this is important, but it does many other things that are much more significantly important. Now, when you think about, well, how is it that we don't get enough from our diet. Well, once again, look at the standard American diet. When we look at foods that are rich in biotin, we can look at egg yolks. So a lot of people do egg whites and avoid the yolk. So there's one option. Vegetables, things like spinach and mushrooms. We know a lot of Americans avoid the vegetables altogether. So we know that in terms of dietary intake, we are likely to be at the low end when it comes to biotin. We also know that healthy gut bacteria can also help to produce biotin. Now, keep this in mind. How many people have unhealthy bacteria that resides in their gut that's kind of the predominant bacteria within your microbiome? Quite a few people. This is why we always emphasize the importance of being on a good, comprehensive, multi-strain probiotic because it does so much to really enhance the body's immune system and the ability to create energy in the body. So those good, healthy bacteria, they do so many different wonderful things. So you can look at different reasons as to why people can have low levels of biotin. So we can look at the diet, we can look at biotin levels usually becoming suboptimal during pregnancy. We can look at certain medications that can drive up a biotin deficiencies, especially a lot of the anti-seizure medications. Um, Certainly there's medications for skin disorders such as acne that can create biotin deficiencies. We can look at alcohol consumption, you can look at cigarette smoking, and you can see where biotin deficiencies can really start to become incredibly problematic. And it's not just because it's going to be affecting your hair, skin, and nails. We have to understand what it is that biotin is actually doing. And one of its most important roles, vitamin B7, which is biotin, is for cellular energy metabolism, for the production of adenosine triphosphate. That is our energy for the regulation of oxidative stress. So if we have high levels of oxidative stress... This can do damage to the mitochondria, which makes that cell not want to function properly, which means you're not making adequate energy. So we can see all of the different ways that just biotin for energy is important and all of the different ways that we could potentially have low or suboptimal levels of biotin. So I'm going to talk about some of the science behind biotin and why this is something that you may want to consider as part of your daily supplementation routine. We know that biotin is a cofactor in fatty acid synthesis. So remember what we're thinking about fatty acids, carnitine, for example. Carnitine grabs a hold of those fatty acids and helps drive them into the mitochondria to be made into energy. Well, 
biotin is required for the fatty acids to be synthesized. When we think about being a cofactor within the Krebs cycle and the TCA cycle, so this is playing this role as to where energy is actually made and manufactured in the body. Many times people just think about biotin when it comes to the health of the hair and the health of your nails. And of course, we know that biotin is essential for the production of keratin. And so therefore, this is why it's important when it comes to hair, skin, and nails. But biotin does so much more. So this is why I wanted to include it in today's product specials. Because we have to have biotin when it comes to energy production. When we look at the science behind biotin, they once again can draw these conclusions of low biotin status and low energy states. So let's talk about a interesting study where they really delve in to biotin and biotin deficiencies and how biotin deficiency can create havoc in the body. And certainly we can look at low serum biotin levels in people who complain about hair loss, for example, um, knowing that we need to have biotin for that keratin. And they've done studies where they can see that. They can look at you know, women who are complaining about hair loss and they look at their biotin levels and usually, you know, close to half of those women will show that they have a biotin deficiency. So, but if we're having a biotin deficiency and it's creating hair loss, what is that doing at that cellular energy level? So biotin is a B vitamin. It's a water-soluble vitamin. And we know that it is serving as a coenzyme for all of these different things. So we can look at pyruvate, we can look at um, acetyl-CoA. There's looking at the, the biochemistry behind how biotin is actually utilized. But when we think about fatty acid biosynthesis, when we think about gluconeogenesis, so maintaining healthy blood glucose, biotin is incredibly critical to this. And understanding that a biotin deficiency can become incredibly problematic when we look at energy. And this is an area that oftentimes people don't think about. You know, if you have low energy, you usually aren't thinking, gosh, I wonder if my biotin levels are low. But this is why taking the performance multivitamin is a very good idea because you're getting your biotin that way, but it would always be advantageous to then take additional biotin. So if you feel like you are dragging throughout the day, I would advise trying out some additional biotin along with that true energy because it really can make a incredible difference to how you're actually feeling. Because like I said, it's not one of those things that you talk about. You don't think, oh, it's, yeah, it's my low biotin levels. That's why I just don't feel like I've got a lot of giddy up and go today. But yet we know this. And biotin deficiency, while in the big scheme of things is relatively rare, it still happens. I said, when you look at women who complain about hair loss, and if you were to do their serum biotin levels, close to half of them would have low serum biotin levels. You can look at people who have issues with dermatitis, you know, skin issues, and they can have low biotin levels. There's, you know, a gene that regulates biotin. You know, there can be a genetic component to that. But at the end of the day, we know that biotin plays this really important role in the body when it comes to helping to make energy. And if we are lacking in that, we once again are creating a situation where we potentially march down that road for mitochondrial dysfunction. And once we hit mitochondrial dysfunction, then we really start to have significant problems. Because if your mitochondria decides it's just done, doesn't want to work anymore, that cell is going to atrophy or apoptosis as they call it. And this can really be a huge problem because now we're losing actual cellular function. And if we lose cellular function, we know that we are now impacting the pathways in the body. Now here's just another quick um, study before I wrap up for the day on Fatigue, provoked by biotin deficiency. 
And this was an animal study, but I just thought I would mention it because I thought it was quite interesting because they wanted to look at the relationship between low biotin and fatigue. And they found that in this study, when they created an environment where there was a biotin deficiency, they saw a significant shift in energy states in the body. And this was really an impressive study because they actually had these animals swimming. And they found that those who had the biotin deficiencies were slower at swimming. They struggled more with doing that. But when they restored their biotin levels, they were back at it. They were able to swim. They were very energetic. So think about that just for a moment. The next time that you feel like you're dragging throughout the day, maybe you should say, you know what, let me get over to Invite Health and let me get myself some biotin because maybe it's the biotin. Maybe my fatty acids aren't making their way to the inside of my cells to be made into energy because I'm not making enough fatty acids because I don't have enough biotin. So it's just some really fun and interesting science that is out there. And I certainly just wanted to, to share that with you today. And that is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning into the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. And we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. 